In this video, we're going to talk about evidence for Noah's flood in the Grand Canyon as presented by Russ Miller, founder of Creation, Evolution, and Science Ministries in Flagstaff, Arizona. Russ sells people guided trips and rafting tours through the Grand Canyon and talks about young earth creationism. Do you guys, do you guys see what I consider one of the greatest proofs of the global flood anywhere Amen. in the world out there? Do you guys see what I'm talking about? Yep. What do you see? <coughs> Straight up and down up walls and... Down. and well, that's Rebels. some of it. Now, but what I was referring red to you, is yeah, Red Butte. Butte. Red Butte? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right you out got, there. You've got Red Butte yeah, right, there. right there. Yeah. Whoa, blew a sandal. <laughs> so you can see Red Butte from right here, and you can see how those layers used to be above the rim, removed for tens of thousands of square miles, and it's pretty awesome proof. Uh, what he's talking about is way out there in the distance, so I drew a red circle around it so you can see where it is. It's a good thing for him that it isn't real close, because those people might see there's no evidence at all there for any biblical flood. According to Young Earth Creationists, these are all layers that were laid down during the biblical flood, including many layers above that have since eroded away. The layers above this began to erode away around 50 million years ago, when the entire Colorado Plateau region began to raise up from sea level. While the layers of the Grand Canyon are Permian and older, what we see in Red Butte, the sedimentary layers, are Middle Triassic, around 240, 245 million years old. They're capped by much more recent basalt, which is a lava flow from around 10 million years ago, before the Grand Canyon formed. Most of the erosion that caused the Grand Canyon has been done within the last 6 million years. There are U.S. Forest Service signs on site there that explain this to a lot of the visitors. What Russ Miller isn't telling these people is that the Shinnerump member of the Chinle Formation is actually a conglomerate full of coarse grain sandstone, pebbles, and even large rocks. Not that far to the east we have other members of the Chinle Formation and the layers there make up the Painted Desert and the Petrified Forest. Young Earth creationists like to focus on the Grand Canyon and ignore these other areas because they simply can't explain them. For example, the light-colored layers you see are volcanic ash, and they're localized. You can't explain that in a worldwide flood. I think one thing that's got some yeah, folks confused is the elevations. you got to realize the elevations have nothing to do with the strata layers. Because right now we're on the Kaibab limestone at 8,000 foot elevation. The Kaibab limestone on the other side of the rim is 7,000 foot elevation. The Kaibab limestone, when you got off the river at Lee's Ferry today, is 3,000 feet elevation. It was at 3,000 feet, but we're now on the up warp at 8,000 feet. The whole area was uplifted. And remember last night, as I was drawing a page, I showed you, looked at the up warp, and you go down, and all of a sudden it's breached. Leaving behind Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon doesn't cut into the plain. It cuts through this up warp, see? The Kaibab uplift, or Kaibab Plateau, is only one of the areas that the Colorado River carved through. The Grand Canyon is 277 miles long, and the river cuts through much of the Colorado Plateau. He mentioned Lee's Ferry. That's at the head of the Grand Canyon, and we find the same layers there as we do at Red Butte. There's also some world-class fly fishing for trout there, but you can see in this picture of me from the 1990s that we don't always catch trout. So, all these things you can see from right here, uh, the Coconino sandstone and all the proofs that it formed under water, destroying the old earth beliefs of, you know, dry deserts, which is every time there's a sand dune or a sandstone layer, their interpretation is it formed in dry deserts over long ages of time, and more and more proofs are coming out all the time that they formed um, quickly underwater. Like the Coconino sandstone, it's found all the way up to Antarctica. And it's found over across the seas and in parts of Europe. It was a worldwide layer. It didn't form in some regional desert condition. Well, he makes some major errors here. This is the Tapit sandstone that formed in that area as a marine environment. No geologists claim that all sandstone is formed as a dry desert. Geologists can tell that Aeolian sandstone, like the Coconino sandstone, was formed under dry desert conditions. The cross bedding and the layers we see here are basically preserved sand dunes. While there are Aeolian sandstone deposits in different areas of the world, there is no Aeolian sandstone layer that covers the entire world like he suggested. It doesn't make any sense. If none of this makes sense to him, he needs to go back and take a basic geology course. So anyways, uh, I just love this spot. You've got 
You've got the, the um, Bright Angel Canyon down below. And do you notice something about that canyon? What can you tell us about that canyon down there? It, it goes all the way down into the, the main to the main chasm. There's no strata. Uh, it gets strata. down into the non-stratified schists and granites, which we consider to be the original creation rock. Well, at two billion years old, they're only half as old as the age of the Earth, and there's absolutely no evidence they were original creation. So, again, the non-stratified layers were there originally. They were not on the surface. They were probably buried by up to two miles of sediments. The sediments probably shouldn't have been stratified in the original creation. Now it's story time. He's just making things up as he goes along. Then he's going to give us the story from the Bible. The fountains of the deep erupted. Windows of heaven came down. The flood lasted over 300 days. Flood waters rose for 150 days and then abated for 150 days. During the first 150, those fountains were erupting and that mile and a half to two miles of top soil was being eroded and eroded when they started to abate. Now those waters start laying down those sediments, but now the sediments are stratified out by grain size, weight, and density. Except remember that picture we looked at earlier? This conglomerate with large rocks, medium-sized rocks, all different sized grains, sits right on top of fine grain shale. So they're separated. All the sand grains are together and we, and we get the Coconino sandstone. The shale layers are together. We get the hermit shale below the Coconino sandstone. Here's a picture I took last year of where the Coconino sandstone above meets the hermit shale below. Now not only do we see this, the cross bedding stop, we also see finer grain particles below the larger grain particles of the Coconino sandstone. So none of what he's saying about these layers being sorted makes any sense. About 200 miles away to the southeast on the southern edge of the Colorado Plateau, you can see where the Coconino sandstone above and the shale below go back and forth because it was the edge of the inland sea and it advanced and retreated at different times. The, the limestone uh, grains are separated. But for some reason, sacralists think having limestone is a problem for a global flood. They say, oh, you couldn't get that much uh, of, the, of the creatures that, that, are, that make limestone in such a short event. I actually uh, studies at, some, at various colleges, including Indiana State, show that in, in warm water conditions, you can get massive blooms uh, of algae and such. But remember, from the fall of man to uh, the flood, they had about 1,700 years to, to build lime formations that would have then been torn up during the flood the grains separated by grain size, weight, and density, brought them together, and then they were laid down in the global flood. There he goes with his sorting of particles by weight and density again. This is from my collection. I, I collect layers of the Grand Canyon there on my patio, and the top layer here is Kaibab limestone, and below it you see Coconino sandstone. The Kaibab limestone is full of all kinds of marine animals and shells. We don't see any of that in the, the fine particles of the Coconino sandstone below. So limestone isn't a, isn't a problem uh, uh, for our side at all. Well, it is a problem if you have to make up stories that don't fit the evidence. Not one single thing he told these people fits the evidence that we see.